This is Town Square Sunday on 1420 WBSM, the place where people come together to talk about the good things happening in and around New Bedford. Come together right now. Oh. And now, the moderator of Town Square Sunday, Jim Phillips. Good morning and welcome to Town Square Sunday. Each week we touch base with community groups and nonprofit agencies to find out what's happening on the South Coast. I'm Jim Phillips. Today we're speaking with John Buddy Andrade and Toy Forts. John has been very active in the community on a number of issues. Mr. Forts has uh, a business called Toys Tom- Tumblers. Tonkers Tumblers. Tonkers Tumblers. Tonkers right. Tumblers. And uh, an organization that gets kids moving, jumping, and tumbling. And keeping kids busy and safe, the goal of both these men. Uh, welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having us, Jim. So, we're talking uh, first about the Gomes School Gym Night Program, right. which is now in its, how many years, buddy? This is our third season. Uh, the 2018-2019 uh, season uh, will start on October uh, 9th. It will end on June 20th of 2019. And I want to uh, first uh, thank uh, the former superintendent, uh, Pia Durkin, for having uh, allowed us to uh, uh, bring the program to Gomes School Gym and uh, to the kids in the, uh, the city of New Bedford. Uh, it, it was her uh, uh, believing in us that this was the right thing to do for the neighborhood and, uh, and for the uh, youth of the, of the uh, school, school system. And uh, because of it, uh, and, her, and also partnering with uh, Chief Cadero, and those two individuals helped us uh, put this thing together uh, with the uh, assistance of Marcus Houtman, uh, who was a board member of, uh, of the Ben Rose uh, Sports Program, and uh, uh, the architect uh, designer of our, of our basketball program. How many um, how many kids are involved uh, at last count last year? Well, we had uh, for the entire year we had uh, one thousand two hundred kids who came into the building. Whoa, See, that's a lot, and, and that's a lot. And, and, and let, let me let me explain that we're talking on an average of anywhere from twenty five to thirty kids. Okay. On, on a on a slow night, and anywhere from forty five to fifty five kids on a, on a very 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 busy night, and that's most of the time. How many nights a week does this program run? Well, this is the interesting part. When we first started, we wanted to, we were looking for two nights, and working with uh, 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 Mr. O'Leary, Andrew O'Leary from the uh, school department, and uh, and, she- and Shelley, uh, we were able to go ahead and, and convince the facilities committee. Okay, of course, with the support of uh, uh, Pierre Durking and, and uh, a chief, uh, that. We wanted to expand it from two nights to four nights. But more importantly, we wanted to bring other things in besides just the basketball. We're looking at tag football. We're looking at indoor soccer and and volleyball and stuff like that. But we also knew of a very, very important gem in our community that's been around for umpteen years. He's, He's an antique. And that was the gymnastics program. And, and uh, a very good friend of mine, so I said, what the hell, man, let's get Toy in here, too. We need Toy in here. And this year, in our third season, Toy, Toy was with us uh, last year. He's yeah. going to be getting with us this year. This year, uh, we're going to expand the program and up until 10 o'clock at night, And that, which is the, the gymnastics is on Monday. The basketball open gym program will go on from Tuesday to Friday from 6 to 10 on certain nights, depending on how, how we uh, work out the, uh, the details. And then during that time when, uh, from 6 to 7.30, we will have artists coming into the, in, into the gym to work with the little kids. A lot of parents come. And they bring the little kids who are not able to play basketball. I'm talking about seven, eight, nine years old. And so what we want to do with them is not a babysitting service, but it's a way to keep them busy so that the moms and dads can enjoy the games or if they're playing the games. Because now, mind you, these are young people and they have children. And so we're going to have a table set up with these artists coming in to do arts and crafts with the young kids who, for the most part, go to Gome School or the Renaissance School. And so this is a, a, an addition to their day there at Gome School. But I want to make introduce our guy who is running the gymnastics program, Mr. Toy Forts, also a Vietnam veteran, a member of the Cape Verde community, uh, uh, and a strong member of the uh, South End community. Toy, good to see you here. My I'm pleasure, glad you're Jim. It's been been a few years. Yep. Like I said, um, yeah, I'm real, real glad to be here. And thank you for the invite. Um, what's your role? As he mentioned, you're going to be running the gymnastic program. Well, like I said, thanks to Buddy. Like I said, um, as you know, I've been 
teaching is a lot of, I should say, a lot of people don't know. I've been teaching for 55 years. Wow. I started with Manny Coster basically in the early 60s. And like I said, I love the sport. I've been a high school coach at Somerset High School. I've uh, been inducted to the Hall of Fame. And working with the kids, like I said, it, uh, the problem is just having the kids just running around the streets in no, no direction. And thank God for that guy, Manny Costa, Butch Center, that uh, kind of put me under their wing and just ha had me start getting involved in gymnastics. And I want to give the kids the same opportunity I had. I've had an illustrious career, and I thank the Lord for everything that's been going on in my life. Um, again, I've been on Ted Mack. I've been on community auditions. I've performed in the Boston Gardens. I mean, I mean uh, I've been blessed. And I, I want to see people that are less fortunate to have an opportunity like I have. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I said, I'm, I'm blessed. And like I said, and thanks, thanks to Buddy, like I said, expanding the program. Because I was teaching, I'm teaching up at the Andre McCoy Rec Center. I'm over there on on our Wednesday nights from 5:30 to 7:30, and expanding this. Like so, now I'm in the West End and the South End. It gives an opportunity for both communities to get involved. Because some parents don't have vehicles to get them down over there, and vice versa. But yes, I'm blessed. Thank you. Well, that's a wonderful thing, now, buddy. You mentioned 10 p.m. and uh, a light comes on when I hear 10 p.m. When are these youngsters going to do their homework? Good, good point. Good point. See, most of the kids we try to have out of there by eight o'clock, eight thirty, the ones that we know are in elementary and, go and middle school. The older boys and girls, we let them stay a little later. Nine o'clock is what we were doing. But then we have a, a, a group that's a little older. 18, 19, 21, and so we're getting them to come in and to stay a little longer to 10 o'clock. However, we're not asking them to come to stay at 10 o'clock unless they're going to give back two. That means we have the 11, 12, 14 year olders and we need coaches for them. See, Toy is coming giving, he's always been giving. And so what we're trying to say to others, you need to come up too and give. Yeah. So, but these young people, we're asking them to give as well. The program is free, so you want to come and you want to play at 10 o'clock, so come when you come at 6 o'clock, hang out with the 14, 11-year-olders and coach their games, coach a team. Because we don't have a league. It's not a league. It's all pick up. It's all open, and it runs well. The kids run it themselves. We have th th That's their responsibility. They do a, well, a good job in timing the, the game so that everybody gets an opportunity to play. In other words, we don't play the 21. We play the 11 or 15, depending on what, what, what the, uh, the time schedule is. So they get a chance to play a little later, the older ones. The younger ones, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a plan. We don't let them stay. They have to go home because of the homework. And also, not just because of the homework, but because they're going to get up in the morning. That's right. Yeah, see, that's the same thing that um, one thing that Manning Costa instilled in us was that the education is very important being together with people, like I said, and people giving back. And like I said, that's, that's really important because, like I said, they didn't have the opportunity to have some of the stuff that we had or the stuff that we didn't have. You know, everybody getting together like this and, like I said, making a village. Like I said, that's how the, the yeah. things work. And again, like I said, having this program going on, uh, it's working. I work and I've been watching the square. I've got people, I've got students that I've taught in the past that come up and they help me with my class because basically I have some of my old tumblers from the House of Champions that was uh, under the direction of Manny Costa and Butch Center. And like I said, I've got students that, that are like I said, well in their 50s that come by and help me with the class. I've got students that, that I've had from Somerset High School that have come by and p participated in the classes. And that's giving back. And like I said, when I see that, kind of touches my heart. You know, here you are. You're, 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 you're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Back. But you want to see more light. You want to see more light. All right. So basically, the school department has given you permission to use the Gomes School. They mm -hmm. provide a janitor, they yes. all of that, and um, this program is free for all intents and Correct. purposes. Nobody gets paid, nobody keeps nobody money, no. none of that stuff. So it's uh, it's an interesting thing. Now, the 
Registration is October 9th, right. is that right? Right. Well, and registration is open right now. Okay. People can register on October 9th through the uh, 12th. We'll, we'll do the final registrations then, getting everybody in, getting everybody signed up. Permission slips have to be done. Even all the adults, I don't care if you're 99 years old, have to do a permission slip. Everybody that comes in, uh, we have a permission slip. We do a very good job in keeping the place secure, clean. Uh, the janitors are there on duty anyway, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we're not paying for a janitor to be there, but we keep it clean we we keep it monitored we do a good job with the help of the youngsters i, I do want to thank the new life church for their volunteers who have come in uh um, my sister sandra uh the um uh, um, other individuals from the neighborhood the older the moms and dads the older guys that come and play ball because they end up getting into the rut what i'm trying to get into what i am into is helping the kids it's not about the yeah. old folk it's about the kids it's about academics uh, and we uh clear about academic support uh marcus haltman who's now the technical uh one of the technical advisors for the new bedford high school uh, uh my son tion pina uh he does the asap program he does all of that and everything we do is basically making sure that the kids are academically inclined as well as being sp sportsmanship and all that other kind of stuff so that the success of this program is making it what we always wanted to be a safe haven for people to come and have fun and get together all right. And one last part of that, we do know that there has been conversation about extending this program to Hayden McFadden or Cardney Academy, mm. or both, and we want to see that happen. Um, new additions this year, are the, we, well, uh, tumbling. Yes. Is one new addition. Anything else? Well, the art stuff that we're talking about, um, uh, Macy, uh, Macy Blue, Macy Dunbar, who's originally from uh, Newport via uh, uh, Martha's Vineyard, a friend of Colleen Cardwell's. She has a, a studio at the Hatch um, um, Studios on, on Hatch Street. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she'll be coming in with some of the art. And um, Miss um, um, Al's Karen Al's, yeah. uh, who's uh, from right from the neighborhood, lives right there on, on Christian Avenue, an artist, uh, uh, just retired, and she wants to come in and help out with the kids. And she she approached us, and I was it, tickle pink uh, when she did that. I was just so tickled because this is what we're trying to do: is an express a point of the involvement. Folk, community involvement. Come yeah. out. I don't want to hear about retirement, folk. Yeah. <laughs> Come give an hour out of your retirement to these kids. Uh, they, they deserve it. Uh, they want it. And I'm telling you, you'll love it once you do it. You're listening to Town Square Sunday. I'm Jim Phillips, and my guests are John Buddy Andrade and Toy Forts of Tonka's Tumblers. And uh, they are both involved in the Gome School Gym Night Program. Registration happening. You can register now. How can people register? They can register. Uh, we have uh, flyers going around the neighborhood, and they'll be able to see on, on the flyers at the, the telephone number uh, uh, at the office at 508-993-8500 uh, to call the register, get a registration of a uh, permission slip, and or come the night of uh, uh, um, October 9th through the 12th, and we'll get you registered there with the younger younger kids especially. But I'm in the neighborhood. I'll be walking around. Uh, you see me. I'll have plenty of uh, slips on me, uh, being able to uh, uh, get people registered. And this is also to register with the uh, Tonkas Tumblers for Monday night. Uh, right. e everything is everything is registered. Everybody has to uh, do these forms so that we uh, have everybody. Yeah, uh, same thing applies. They like, said so teaching up at the Andre McCoy Rec Center which is a great program that's going on up there. I'm up there on Wednesdays, 5.30 to 7.30, and the same pro same things apply. you got to go to the building. Uh, you have to register with them. It doesn't cost you anything, and they have multiple pro programs that are going on. Something very interesting that the city is doing, and thank the Lord, like I said, I've, I've got guys like Buddy and a few other people, like I said, that have helped me keep this program going. Again, I've been doing this for 55 years. It seems like I only started yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, I've been I've been doing I would, I've been doing for 45 years, and yeah. it does not seem like it started yesterday. But that's okay. Um, we want to touch on an issue that's been around for a while: the former Morse cutting tool site, still not totally cleaned. Um, Buddy Andre has uh, been involved in this for a long, long time, and it will not be cleaned. Uh, we have now been informed by the Department of uh, Environmental Protection, which is a state agency, uh, that they have just fought, finished an audit of the site, and they're saying that CBS, the uh, CBS commu uh, the uh, Community Broadcasting System, which is the TV station that you guys watch every day, Viacom, Paramount Pictures, Golf and Western, 
the billion dollar corporations have done enough and now they can just walk away and leave it the way it is. And I fault the New Bedford City Council. I fault the New Bedford mayors all the way back to Mayor Rosemary Tierney, uh, John Bullard. And I fault uh, the uh, uh, Attorney General Scott Hosbarger, who sold out the city way back then by making the deal with Viacom without including the community. And then I, of course, uh, uh, the, our legal department here and our tax department had the, uh, uh, the stupidity to go and bail out Viacom by taking the property because of taxes, $200,000 in taxes. Now we own, the city of New Bedford owns this contaminated site and doesn't have a penny in which to go ahead and do anything to make it a better uh, uh, situation for the community. So we did have a meeting Monday night on it, and we are going, we're preparing to have a, a, a workshop uh, sometime in November with EPA to come talk about the new Brownfields program, because it's now called BUILD, B-U-I-L-D, uh, and how we can work with EPA, work with the federal government, since the city and the state government doesn't want to work with the community to do anything, to work with the federal government to come in and try to revitalize that property so that we can get some use out of it for the community. And we're looking at a community center, a senior citizen center, health center, uh, a recreation and art, uh, cultural arts center and all that. All right, we have limited time. Can we do... Can we do that on that site, uh, given the contamination? Yes, the science is there because of the, the contamination that's on the uh, east partial. We can do what is called vapor intrusion pack systems, which alleviates the vapor that comes up that causes the cancer that, that is bad for you to breathe, it's like they did at uh, Key Junior High School, and it will go airborne and won't bother anybody. So yes, we can build, we can do that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the city uh, uh, um, shot themselves in the foot. All right. Well, look, we we don't have enough time to really go any further with this, but well, we're going to continue. We're we're moving on. We're we're going to build there. That's our goal, and we're going to do this. Is there work. a meeting with Build yet? Excuse me. Is there a meeting with this Build organization? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're planning on it for November second uh, with EPA to come to New Bedford to give a workshop on the build. John Andrade, Toy Forts. Good luck with all the activities that they're going. Thank to you very Thank much. Thank you so much for giving us the time. Town Square Sunday returns in one moment.